welcome to uh, lesson six. We're going to break lesson six into three parts using chapter 19.1, 19.2 and 19.3. Dr. Ken here with you. We're going to be looking at single phase power. So about this lesson, we're going to explain power in an AC circuit with the aid of phasor diagrams and some basic mathematics kind of stuff that you're probably well and truly used to by now. We're going to introduce the terms of real, apparent and reactive power. We also sometimes say true power as for uh, real power. And we're going to explain the problems caused by reactive power in terms of the losses that can occur and some of the problems that, that creates. We're going to introduce you to the term power factor and we're going to discuss the importance of maintaining the power factor at an electrical supply system at above a certain value. We're only going to touch on power factor a little bit and just introduce you to it. The next lesson we go quite deeply into power factor. So um, lesson one, 19.1 introduces our introduction, uh, slides one to six. 19.2 power and reactive resistive circuits slides 7 to 11 and then 19.3 or the third part uh, power in AC circuits slides 12 to 19. So let's get underway. Um, here you can see what we might call the original power triangle up here in the left hand corner is the actual power triangle. Um, you can you see we can use particular letters for each side of our power triangle, which I'll explain in a moment. But uh, just a reminder of some of the history of Nikola Tesla here on the hypotenuse of our power triangle. He is the inventor of AC, and all credit should go to him for the development of much of the electrical systems that we use today. On the right hand side, we have George Westinghouse. He uh, teamed up with Tesla, bought his patents, and actually turned his ideas into the reality of uh, the power systems that you now see around the entire world. And of course, on the bottom we have Edison, um, having invented or developed DC systems, was soon outrun by um, Nikola Tesla and Westinghouse, because his DC system was very, very difficult to generate very, very difficult to reticulate and uh, had a lot of uh, moving parts which uh, broke down easily, which is where Tesla and Westinghouse won the day because basically there are no moving parts in the AC system. So a little bit of history always reminds us and helps us link what we're learning. So here's a little bit of an introduction to single phase power. Now single phase power, if you can remember, power is simply the voltage multiplied by the current. So I know these diagrams may seem a little bit overwhelming to begin with, but let's just start with diagram A. This one's for resistive AC circuits and it consumes true or real power. So this one true power. Now you remember power simply is equal to V multiplied by the current. That's it. So if we take this particular voltage and current and you can see the voltage and current are in phase with each other. They're crossing over at the zero points together. They're reaching their maximums at the same time. They're reaching their minimums at the same time. So we'd say they're in phase or it's purely resistive. If I now take instantaneous values of current and voltage at any, any point along the curve, multiple points and I simply multiply those together they would give me these points on the power curve. 
and I would end up with this curve. So let's look at our diagram a little more carefully. We have a horizontal zero in the up forward direction. This is positive. This is negative. And on the horizontal, we're moving from zero degrees through one complete cycle or 360 degrees. So the first thing we need to note is all the power when we multiply the voltage and the current together, guess what? It's all positive. And you might say, oh, but what about this stuff in the negative down here, Ken? Well, if you remember your algebra, two negatives make a positive. So whenever I multiply the positive and negative voltages together, I am going to end up with a positive result. So I always end up with positive power. So for a purely resistive AC circuit, the power is always positive. There's never any negative, even though the voltage and the current have a negative component. All the power being consumed is resistive and it's all above the line. Therefore, it's all plus and it all gets used. It all gets what we call consumed. The other thing to note is the frequency of the power. Can you see the frequency of the power is double the fundamental? So here's my blue voltage and my red current, one complete cycle. If I look at the power, I go through one, two. So frequency of power, so the power frequency, so um, the frequency for the power is equal to the fundamental just go if you nd fund times 2 so the two big things we picked up out of this graph is the power is always positive the frequency of the power is twice the fundamental Now let's move over to our capacitive AC circuit, B. Again, we have a plus component and we have a minus component. But look at our voltage. There's our voltage, one complete sine wave. Here's the current. And the current is minus 90 degrees it's 90 degrees behind the voltage so there's a phase shift here between voltage and current so if I now again take instantaneous values for current and voltage at any point along the two curves and I multiply those together I'm going to get the power curve. So same same curve, but notice the curve itself. We have a plus component now for that quarter of a cycle, and we have a minus component for this quarter of the cycle. Then we have another plus component for this component, and then another negative component. So in a capacitive AC circuit, energy is being stored electrostatically on the capacitor, it's being stored for one quarter of a cycle, then released back into the circuit on the next quarter cycle, then on the plus, stored again, and then released back. So energy is being stored and released. Current is flowing, yes, but no actual energy is being consumed. Therefore, we call it reactive power. So it's power that does no active work. So it's stored in the reactances in the capacitor. It's an electrostatic reactance. It's storing and releasing energy. 
you also notice that the frequency is two times the fundamental so here's our fundamental the blue line one single and we've got one two of the power wave so this we go through the power wave once through the power wave twice so the frequency is double the fundamental again now let's look at the next curve this is C this time it's the inductive one so we're storing and releasing energy in a magnetic field and this time you'll notice that the current is ahead of the voltage so on this one we've got a plus 90 degrees in relation to the voltage shift from the voltage and current being out of phase with each other so again if we multiply our voltages and our currents at those instantaneous levels we're going to end up with this power curve so same thing again we, we take any of those instantaneous values and we will get the power curve in this case we have a minus first then a plus then a minus then a plus so over the entire cycle of the wave we've sent energy back into the system saved energy pushed energy back in saved energy pushed energy back in again so we've done exactly the same as the capacitor but at 90 degrees the other way so we've ended up again please note the doubling of the frequency of the power but the two powers cancel each other out completely no power is consumed in a reactive circuit be it capacitive or inductive so here we have these two here it's all reactive There we go, can't write too well with my mouse, but there we go, all reactive. This one at minus 90 degrees, this one at plus 90 degrees, and of course the difference between the two of them is 180 degrees, and that's going to come into play very shortly as we start to describe these things using phasor diagrams. So power is consumed in a resistive circuit and it's called true power. A purely reactive circuit consumes reactive power and that reactive power does no actual work. The next thing we're going to introduce you to in this first section is a thing called the power triangle and you can see it uh, drawn here in the uh, center of the screen we have true power on the horizontal because it's the in phase power on the horizontal vertically sorry on the horizontal vertically that doesn't make sense does it on the vertical we have the reactive power which is a combination of the capacitive this one's remember is this one here was the the capacitive and this one was the inductive so reactive we use the letter Q as I've already explained to represent reactive power true power we use capital P and the hypotenuse is what we call apparent power the reason we call it apparent it looks like we're using all that power but actually we're only using the re the true power we don't use the reactive power even though we have to allow for the reactive power component and we'll explain why the reactive power comes into play 
and why it's something pretty well most of the time we want to reduce. So on the bottom of the triangle, as I said, we've got true power. So this graph here, remember, represents true power. These two together will represent reactive power. And basically, because they're 180 degrees out from each other, we're going to be able to subtract them. So if you remember, this one was minus 90. And this one was plus 90. We're going to actually be able to subtract them to end up with the actual Q that we want.